Welcome to the Cell and Molecular Biology Lecture Series and this is one of the most important and the highlights of the CMB content and we'll talk about immunology and particularly the molecular basis of your immune response. Your antibodies are the touchdown or touchstone of your immunological theory. Your body is protected from hostile pathogens like fungi, bacteria, and viruses, even parasites, and also cancers by your immune system. These are being formed of several lines of defenses and they can broadly be divided into different perspectives or different sections into the innate and adaptive immune system. Your innate immune system is a combination of general defenses, including the skin and a variety of cells that attacks your invading pathogens. Your cells, including your phagocytes, which ingest pathogens, and the natural killer cells, which destroy infected cells that host viruses. If your innate immune system cannot cope with a pathogenic attack, the adaptive immune system is activated to join the fight. Your adaptive immune system uses a type of white blood cell, we call it lymphocytes, to deliver a more targeted response. The most important of these are called the B cells and your T cells. Let's go back in time. These are the important feature in context and these people are historically um, giving us a good note for their contributions in the field of immunology. We have here the first picture is the Paul Ehrlich in 1897. He proposes the side chain theory to help explain how your immune system works. We have also your the second picture is the uh, he is Niels Jern in 1955. He described what Frank Burnett would call tonal selection, a like tonal selection theory. And um, this is your now, immunologists, Australian immunologists Gustav Nosel and American geneticist Joshua Ledenberg, which shows that one B cell always produces one antibody. This is the evidence for clonal selection. And lastly, we have here a uh, woman, uh, a Hungarian Swedish immunologist, Eva Klein, which discovers natural killer cells. And this is the picture is your Fra uh, he is Frank McFarlane Burnett from 1899 to 1985. So your human immune system is, um, they, they give us an overview for human response. Your human immune system includes a lot of lymphoid organs, such as your thymus, your bone marrow, your spleen, your lymph nodes, and these scattered cells located as patches within your small intestines and your adenoids and even your tonsils. The vertebrates develop defenses, immunity that, uh, uh, fighting against invading pathogens, the cells of your immune system engage in a type of a molecular screening by recognizing foreign macromolecules. The weapons of your immune system include cells that kill or ingest infect or altered cells. We have also soluble proteins that can neutralize, immobilize, agglutinate, or even kill pathogens. For your innate immune responses, we have phagocytes that have receptor proteins which are embedded on the outside surface of your cell. We have the toll-like receptors, the TLRs, they play a role in promoting immunity from infection. At least 10 TLRs are being expressed by humans. Mutant flies without TLRs are observed to be more susceptible to fungal diseases. So this is the uh, mechanisms by which your immune system can get rid the body of invading pathogens. We have your innate immunity in the left panel and the adaptive immunity in the right panel. And the bacterium is being engulfed by the dendritic cell or the macrophage and then um, it will be releasing a complement it will be attaching to the bacterium and since it's non-specific it can attack any pathogen any invading pathogen going down to your natural killer cell which is attaching to the infected apoptotic cell by the viruses then it will be releasing an ifn alpha okay um, then your cells are becoming resistant to viral infection. So this is leading towards your um, memory cells, your T cells for infections that are involving specific okay, um, infections such as your um, viruses. So this is adaptive immunity that are more specific. And um, your B cells are releasing your antibodies that are attached to the bacterial toxins, endotoxins. Or exotoxins and then the bacterium is being coated with antibody molecules and it forms an antibody layer 
So to give more specifics to that detail and um, discussion, I will discuss to you the overview of your immune responses in the next few slides. Your innate immune responses and your TLRs recognize LPS or the pericharacteristic peptidoglycan components of your bacterial cell wall, the TLR4s. Also with protein flagellin that are found in your bacterial flagella, it's more specific with bacterium, they have a lot of flagella, combos of one, two or more. The double-stranded RNA of replicating viruses, the TLR3, and also your unmethylated CPG dinucleotides. Molecules are known as your pathogen-associated molecular patterns, we call them the PAMPs. Activation of your TLR initiates a signal cascade in the cell that can lead to a variety of protective immune responses. We have TLR, which is the toll-like receptor 3, showing you in the figure on the right. This is bound to a double-stranded RNA, which is colored blue and red. Um, and they have this ready signal to send an intracellular signal alerting the cell of the presence of the foreign nucleic acid. Your innate responses lead to the concentration of defensive ag agents that at the side of the infection. We call it the inflammation. Um, you experience that the fever, okay, rashes, erythrogenic, okay, you um, the patient has um, swelling, okay, also with permission of pus because of um, one of the uh, heat also is one of the most important features of inflammation. If there is an infection, there is an inflammation. Bloodstream complement protein cascade binds to the pathogens triggering lysis and phagocytosis. Your natural killer cells induce apoptosis in virally infected cells and cancer cells. The interferon IFN alpha and alpha IFN beta binds to the surface of your non-infected cells making them resistant to viral infections. These interferons are performing signal transduction pathway and the synthesis of um, miRNAs target targeting viral RNA genomes. Your innate immunity um, is showing here your scanning electron micrograph of a natural killer cell bound to a target cell, in this case a malignant erythroleukemia cell. For your adaptive immune responses, there is a lag period before an attack against a foreign agent. This is not a problem. It's, it's just a matter of um, equipping more uh, defenses to the foreign agent. There is very specific specific for pathogen molecules and it, it only occurs in vertebrates. There are two categories of adapt, adaptive immunity. We have the humoral immunity which is carried out by antibodies. They are global proteins of the immunoglobulin superfamily, the IGSF, and the cell-mediated immunity which is carried out by cells. These both types of immunity are mediated by your lymphocytes, generally the white blood cells, which are leukocytes that are circulating between the blood and lymphoid organs. We have your humoral immunity which is mediated by B lymphocytes or the B cells. They produce antibodies from differentiated plasma cells after stimulation. Your cell mediated immunity is carried out by TIMF lymphocytes or the T cells which recognize and kill infected cells when activated. Both of them are arising from your hematopoietic stem cells. Showing you this figure on your right. Your bone marrow is um, producing these hematopoietic stem cells. It could be different, shaded into different types, the myeloid progenitor cell or the lymphoid progenitor cells. For lymphoid, the T, B, and NK cells. For myeloid, the platelets, the erythrocytes, eosinophil, neutrophil, basophil, mast cells. Or even a monocyte that will become a macrophage or a dendritic cell. Whereas animals have immune system, they have also plant immune system. Your plants lack mobile immune cells. We have also transmembrane sensors or pathogen recogni recognition receptors or the P PRs that detects your PAMPS. Initially, a signal transduction influences the expression of a thousand or more genes. We have antimicrobial enzyme production, release of ROS, cell wall reinforcement. We have second defense wave through the nucleotide binding domain that are having this leucine rich repeat containing receptors or the NLRs. Since this is incompletely understood reinforcers of your plant immune defenses, we have your CRISPR technology that may permit engineered plants to contain more resistance genes. 30% of the crops are being lost to your pathogens. We have here showing you the transmembrane 
sensors that are found on the four cell membrane that detects your PAMPS showing you this figure although this is little, so little but this is I would just have to um, give you some information about your green cells first is the clonal selection theory as it applies to the B cells antibody proteins interact with the foreign molecules we call it the AG or the antigens this antigen binds an antibody from a pre-existing antibodies they are capable of recognizing it and uh, this is what we call as the clonal selection theory the clonal selection of B cells by a thymus dependent anti antigen um, your clonal selection in 1955 it was um, being discovered and proposed by the Danish immunologist Niels Jern and uh, he said that there is a vast array of lymphocytes in the body prior to any infection and that when a pathogen enters your body one type of lymphocyte is being selected to match it and produce an antibody to destroy it it's like a one gene one protein hypothesis so this is apply this applies to this particular pr proposal um, an Australian immunologist Frank Mark Farlin Burnett the photo you see um, in the previous slides supported Jernis idea when in 1957 he said that the selected lymphocyte is reproduced and cloned on a grand scale to ensure enough antibodies are defeating the infection. So this is the figure showing you stem cells and proliferation and very specific antibodies to a, um, a even though there's no antigen they are very committed to lymphocytes with samples so they are very ready to attack any bacterium or any microbe that are um, suspected to be a pathogen so the bacterial capsule is being layered with a polysaccharide and proliferates of antigen specific B cell following lymphocyte selection and then um, the plasma cells are secreting a lot of antibodies that are capable of binding the antigen as you see this is the blue ones the memory cell remains behind for a future encounter with the antigen responsible for your long-term immunity what are the features of the B cell clonal selection? Each B cell becomes committed to produce one species of antibody and these B cells are become committed to antibody formation even though there's no antigen. Antibody production follows selection of B cells by antigen. Immunologic memory provides long-term immunity. There's immunologic tolerance that are preventing the production of antibodies against the self. This is the experimental demonstration that your B cells are being produced even though antigen is not present so uh, we've prepared the spleen cells they have been suspended the B cells are suspended spleen cell is bound to beads beads are covalently bound to antigen A the yellow ones and spleen cell that are bound to the bead with antigen A uh, shows you here that there's no attachment to the beads whereas the spleen cells that did not bind to beads with antigen A um, showing you there's a lot of colors here so the bound cell um, showing you different colors so this is an experimental demonstration using um, a muric spleen for vaccination as uh, it applies to the clonal selection theory uh, the B cells the first vaccine produced was against a smallpox using a related a virulent cowpox most vaccines contain attenuated pathogen antigens and they are capable of stimulating immunity but unable to cause diseases for most vaccines for example antitetanus they do not last a lifetime and require booster shots if individuals are not exposed to pathogen uh, antigens on a regular basis. The booster shot re-stimulates the production of additional memory cells just like in the case of your COVID and passive immunization or consisting of antibodies are effective only for a short period of time and it will not protect you against a subsequent infection. T cells are also activated by your clonal selection interacting with antigens through surface proteins the t-cell receptors or the C dcrs and they are being activated by antigen fragments which are displayed on the surface of your antigen pre presenting cells the apcs which are including dendritic cells and your macrophage apcs ingest microbes with phagocytosis these cells process and present the antigen to cells with tcrs we have here professional antigen presenting cells uh, showing you APCs, um, a colorized scanning electron micrograph of a macrophage on your top and a dendritic cell in your bottom. 
uh, your tumor suppressor genes and on onco genes. These are your brakes and accelerators. Uh, we call it the TP53 gene. Um, uh, these are when your activated T cell proliferates to form a clone of T cells having the same TCR. Once the pathogen is being cleared, most of the T cell populations die by apoptosis, leaving behind a relatively small population of memory T cells. T cells carry out their assigned function through direct interactions with other cells, let's say your B cells, your T cells, or your target cells. Your T cells are releasing cytokines that alter the activity of your target cells. So T cells are releasing the cytokine, the cyto cytokine storm. Cytokines and their sources and their major functions. You have IL-1, which is diverse, induces inflammation, stimulates the helper T cells proliferation. IL-2, which is producing the helper T cells, stimulates the T cell and B cell proliferation. IL-4, the T cells inducing IgM to IgG classes, which in B cells suppresses inflammatory cytokine action. IL-5, uh, helper T cells stimulates your B cell differentiation. IL-10, your T cells in macrophage inhibits macrophage function, suppresses your inflammatory cytokine action. The IFNG, which is your helper T cells and the CTLs, induces your major histocompatibility expression in APCs and activates your natural killer cells. The TNF alpha, which are diverse, inducing inflammation, activates your nitric oxide production in macrophage. Your GM-CSF is um, produced uh, for coming from your helper T cells and your CTLs, stimulating the growth and proliferation of your granulocytes and your macrophage. Where there are three classes distinguished by surface proteins and their biological functions, we have your cytotoxic T lymphocytes or the CTLs, which kill target cells by inducing cell death or apoptosis. Helper T lymphocytes are the regulatory cells are that they're, that are being activated by your APCs. Regulatory T lymphocytes or the T reg cells are suppressing the activities of other immune cells. This is the highly simplified scheme of the role of the Th cells in antibody formation. Now we move forward to the selected topics on the cell and molecular basis of immunity and the modular structure of antibodies. Antibodies or immunoglobulins are proteins with paired heavy chains and light chains. They are being formed with disulfide bridges that, uh, that creates a quaternary structure. There are five classes of immunoglobulins, the IgA, D, E, G, and M. There are two light chains uh, types existing and heavy chain type defines your antibody class. These are the classes of your human immunoglobulins, IgA with um, A, K, or I with uh, molecular masses and their properties. Their molecular masses are measured in kilodalton. Um, uh, IgA is present in tears, nasal mucus, breast milk. IgD is present in B cell, plasma membrane. The function is uncertain. IgE is binding to mast cells, releasing histamine responsible for allergic reactions. Your IgG is primarily blood-borne soluble antibodies, crosses your placenta. IgM is present in uh, B cell plasma membranes and mediate initial immune response, activates your bacterial cleaning, uh, killing complements. Uh, for modular structure, continuing, the IgM is the first antibody secreted by the B cells in the blood after a few days and they have short half-life, like 5 days. Uh, the G IgG is the predominant antibody found in the blood and lymph during a secondary response. IgE is produced at high levels in response with too many parasitic infections. IgA is a predominant antibody in secretions protecting mucosal linings from pathogens. And the IgD has an unclear function. This graph showing you a primary and secondary antibody response. A primary response to an antigen leads to a production of your IgM and your IgG, the first two antibodies. The secondary response leads to a higher antibody levels with no delay, as showing you in the secondary stimulus with the same antigen in green. The IgG molecule is composed of two identical light chains and two identical heavy chains arranged to form a Y-shaped molecule. The antibody chain contains regions of constant, variable, and hyper-variable portions. 
hypervariable regions allow for great diversity of antibody specificity and their constant regions vary between classes of your immunoglobulins. On your left is a space filling model of an IgG molecule with two light chains and two heavy chains. On your right is a schematic model showing the domain structure of an IgG molecule. You have here the fab fragments, the FC fragments, the hinge region, the hinge region that makes the um, the antibody structure more of a Y shape. And take note of this disulfide bridges that are bound together in between of your heavy chains and also the loops between your um, light chains. There are variable portions of heavy and light chains that are contained hypervariable subregions. The light and heavy chains both contain three hypervariable structures that are clustered at the ends of each arm of the antibody molecule. The variations of the amino acid sequences of hypervariable regions account for the great diversity of antibody specificity, allowing these molecules to bind to antigens of every conceivable shape. In your antibody domains, you see that they are constant. There are variable portions that are present in separate domains. Uh, you will see here a three hypervariable, or we call it the HV segments of the chain that are present as loops at one end on the variable domain, which ports, um, forms part of the antigen combining side of the underbody. The epitope or the antigenic determinant is the part of the antigen that is complementary to the binding side of the antibody. A, B antibody and the AG antigen complexes are stable even though they are only joined together by weak non-covalent forces. An antigen typically contains different epitopes which stimulate multiple antibody producing B cell clones. We have here a space filling model based on X-ray crystallography of a complex between lysozyme, the green and the fab portions of your three different antibody molecules. In continuation, the DNA rearrangement that produce genes encoding the B and the T cell antigen receptors. Tonigawa validated that the DNA has rearrangement hypothesis. The DNA genes that are encoding C and V uh, portions of the antibody were widely separated in embryonic DNA but they were very close to each other in DNA obtained from antibody producing myeloma cells. He, suggest, he suggested that the DNA segments encoding the AB regions, the antibody regions, become rearranged during the formation of antibody producing cells. Uh, this is an experimental demonstration of light chains formed by DNA rearrangement. In your embryonic cell, we extracted the DNA, we treat them with restriction enzymes. The antibody producing cell, we extract the DNA also with treating restriction enzymes. We separate the DNA fragments by gel electrophoresis and the two identical gels are separated from each DNA sample. Following electrophoresis, incubate the gels A and C with a radioactively labeled C gene um, probe and gels B and D are radioactively labeled with the V gene probe. Locate sites of the hybridized labeled DNA by autoradiography. So you show, uh, show we here different positions of your bands in gels in A and B, the C and V, and uh, the CV for the C and D. And these are positions of the genes in DNA restriction fragments. So they have 9 um, kilobase pairs in a C fragment and 6 kilobase pairs for V fragment. 3 kilobase pairs for C plus V fragments so you can combine them we can rearrange them two separate genes the vnc were combined to form one continuous gene that encodes one antibody chain the process is catalyzed by the v d and g recombinase which is an enzyme which joins the v and j segments of the gene and deletes the intervening dna Rearrangement is facilitated by signal sequences which are very similar in V and J segments. So these are the DNA rearrangements that lead to the formation of genes for an immunoglobulin. In your germline DNA, we have V1 to 5, then the VN and the uh, J1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and a stop, and then there's a C, okay? 
then there is this um, B cell DNA and then this primary transcript in the mature mRNA so you will see that this they have this um, joining the V and the J segments together okay and they deleted this intervening DNAs that are found in between the the strand um, the DNA rearrangements are producing the B and T cell antigen receptors we have somatic hypermutation which refers to a high mutation rate in V elements of B cells after the VDJ arrangements occur um, this enzyme activation induced cytosine deaminase or the aid that causes the C to U mutations to be paired erroneously and this leads to um, some translation DNA polymerases. These antigen selected cells are proliferating to, uh, to form clones that undergo additional rounds of somatic mutation and selection. In this way, the antibody response to the recurrent or chronic infections improved markedly over time. Once a B cell is committed to form a specific antibody, it can switch to an um, Ig class produced. Okay, it can be IgM to IgG or vice versa by changing the heavy chain producing the cell. This process is called the class switching. It occurs without changing the AG binding site of the AB synthesized. Class switching involves uh, moving a different CH gene next to the VDJ gene that was formed previously by the DNA rearrangement. This switching is uh, under the direction of cytokines secreted by the helper T cells. Uh, this figure is an arrangement of the C genes for the various human heavy chains. In humans, the heavy chains IgM, IgD, IgE are encoded by a single gene, whereas those of the IgG are encoded by four different genes and IgA is being encoded by two different genes. For membrane-bound antigen receptor complexes, antigen receptors are a part of a large membrane protein complexes. Invariant polypeptides associated with BCRs and TCRs play a key role in transmitting signals to the interior that leads to the changes in activity of the B cell or T cell. So this is the structure of the antigen receptors of a B cell, which is a pair of invariant alpha chains and a pair of invariant beta chains in a T cell, an alpha and beta polypeptide chain. These are being linked by your disulfide bridges. Showing you this figure on your right. Now, um, now is the major histocompatibility complex. This is determining uh, genes that determine the compatibility between individuals. About 20 different MHC genes and 7,000 alleles have been identified. The MHC proteins hold fragments of antigen in place of ABCs. The TCR interacts with the MHC blast the antigen fragments and they determine tissue types and disease susceptibility. Your human APCs can present a large number of peptides. An individual may have a variety of class 1 M um, MHC molecules showing you on top or a protein from a single MHC allele which is found in the bottom showing you different shapes of the um, of your peptides and um, only uh, only one type of MHC are produced by these um, the genes or the proteins. APCT cell interaction brings the TCR into the, an orientation that allows it to recognize the specific peptide displayed within a group of an MHC molecule. This kind of interactions are being strengthened by additional contacts like the CD4 or the CD8 in T cell and MHC proteins on an APC. This specialized region between a T cell and an APC is called an immunologic synapse. Uh, remember your nervous system, your neurons. This is an antigen and uh, APC and the T cell interaction during this antigen inter presentation. You have your schematic and the fluorescence microscopy of your APC in red and the TCRs of uh, T cell in green. MHC class 1 proteins consist of a 1 MHC allele plus beta 2 microglobulin. They display the endogenous protein antigens. Proteasome associated enzymes fragment and transport the antigens going to your endoplasmic reticulum. They bind to the MHC1 molecules as you show it in the figure and com uh, complex then becomes membrane bound. This is the processing as uh, showing you this figure on your right. Uh, 
processing pathway for antigens that become associated with MHC class 1 molecules. For class 2 proteins, they consist of two variable chains and display fragments of exogenous antigens that are being taken into the cell by endocytosis. The two molecules are joined to um, an II protein until directed into an endosome or lysosome proteins that displace the antigens originating within the cytosol of the cell. In the lysosome, which is the suicide bags of the cell, the II is degraded and the MHC2 binds antigen fragments that um, originated in the outside of the cell. So this is the MH, MHC class 2 molecules. Now we distinguish the self from non-self. The developing T cells are being screened in your thymus. Um, the high TCR affinity for self molecules will induce apoptosis. With low affinity to bind M, um, the MHC, apoptosis will be neglected or death by neglection. With low affinity for self molecules plus MHC, Binding capability, we have the T-cell clone retention, and less than 5% of the thymic cells will survive. Okay, and uh, this figure will give you the term, um, we determine the fate of the newly formed T-cell in your thymus. With strong affinity, with produce, um, we lead to apoptosis with negative selection. With no affinity, doesn't fit, death by neglect, apoptosis. With weak affinity, this is uh, survival okay, for the positive selection. Lymphocytes, on the other hand, are activated by self-surface signals. B7 proteins on the APC cells interact with the CD28 proteins on the helper T cells in a co-stimulatory -stimul signal interaction. Only professional APCs are being capable of co-stimulatory -stim signaling. They are the only ones that initiate the helper T cell response. Helper T cell activation requires two signals, which protects other cells from autoimmune attack involving the helper T cells. This is a, a schematic showing you an interaction between a professional APC, a mature dendritic cell, and your helper T cell. Your helper T cells bind to the B cells whose receptors recognize the same antigen. B cells are activated by the interaction of cell surface proteins and by cytokines. Cytokines are being released by the T cells into the immunologic synapse including IL-4, IL-5, interleukin-6, and interleukin-10. Cytokines induce proliferation, differentiation, and secretory activities of your B cells. This is an interaction between an activated uh, helper T cell and a B cell. With engineering linkage, we have your adoptive T-cell therapy. Therapy is designed to enhance cancer-fighting capabilities of T-cells, and there are two major forms. TCR therapy, or the transgenic alpha or beta heterodimer is being expressed. Colon and melanoma cancer trials are initiated. Loss of major histocompatibility expression by cancer cells limits its effectiveness. With chimeric antigen receptor, the CAR T-cell therapy, single chain from the V- um, Ig domain, antibody domain is expressed. B cell leukemia trials, no effectiveness against solid tumors to date. With cytokine storms, limit the success uh, success rate in both of your T cell therapy types. And lastly, we have your signal transduction pathways in lymphocyte activation. Tyrosine kinases are implicated in signal transduction during lymphocyte activation. They are members of your SRC and TAC families. Activation leads to the cascade of protein phosphorylation and there are three distinct signal transduction pathways. First is the activation of phospholipase C, leading to formation of IP3 and DAG. Activation of RAS, which activates the MAP kinase pathway. Activation of P13K, which generates membrane-bound lipid messengers. Lymphocytes produce cytokines that are generating cytoplasmic signals that act on intracellular targets. The cytokines use the JAKSTAT signal transduction pathway. The JAKSTAT pathway activates very specific transcription factors that are being regulated by DNA sequences called the interferon-stimulated response element, the ISRE. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching the antibodies as the touchstone of your immunological theory and the molecular basis of your immune responses. This has been Sir Steven and thank you for watching your cell and molecular biology lecture series. Have a nice day everyone.